What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and we are back with Space Engineers. Uh, this time it's a little video carrying on from my past video about solar power and different uses for solar power. This time looking at the sort of modular ship setup that I ended up creating when playing around with solar energy and finding different uses for it. So if you've not looked at that video, I'd advise you go and have a look at it first because it explains sort of some of why I was doing these various things and what led to this particular design. But at the same time, this video is going to talk through pretty much everything I did to create these two craft in front and the various attachments that go onto them. So up there and over there. So very much this all relies around the new merge blocks that were added uh, a little while ago now actually, not that new. But basically they enable you to attach and detach parts and other ships onto another ship of the same size. So it only works small ship to small ship or big ship to big ship. But they will enable you to connect bits on and disconnect bits. And this sort of brewed, brewed this concept of a modular ship. So a ship that could become whatever you wanted it to be, geared towards survival mode where resources are precious and you tend to have quite a lot of things you want to do that don't need huge clever ship designs. You just need the right tool for the job. So introducing you to the sort of the basic cockpit setup and that's exactly what it is. It's a cockpit with some engines pointing in all the directions that have been sort of put in position so that they're slightly out of the way of anything that might be fitted on behind. Uh, and then with a merge block on the front, a merge block on the back and an emergency reactor. Now this, you do have to have a reactor involved in this which is unfortunate. I wanted it to be purely solar power but in order to be able to attach and detach the batteries which are over there obviously this unit needs to have a little bit of power itself so that it can still fly so if we get in here the UI's all been set up and I spent quite a long time thinking through how you'd actually be able to use this properly so it was actually a not just a gimmick it was something that would be functional so you get in and first thing is you need to turn on your reactor uh, that's the emergency reactor with a little bit of fuel in and as you can see it's quite a maneuverable little thing as it stands and first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and connect ourselves to a battery and we have batteries charging in this bay on the auto charge mode um, the only flaw with it seems to only charge them up to about 80 percent and then it turns off i don't know why it does that but that's plenty with what we've got so we need to fly over the top of it and then we need to align ourselves to merge up and i think i might be a fact a little bit low down and my advice would definitely be you want to merge with the battery on the rear of the ship rather than on the front it gets in the way somewhat and with how these are set up with these merge boxes you literally just fly down and as long as you're vaguely lined up you'll link onto and here is where one of the big challenges was on this little platform obviously we've got a lot of blocks and a lot of things that we are connected to and they have all appeared now in the UI and knowing which one of these merge blocks is the correct merge block to detach to undo the one at the base to remove the battery from the platform itself can be kind of difficult. So we have a color coding system on these. We have a big red battery, a big blue battery, small blue, small red. And in order to work out which one to detach, you merely go in and find the correct group because I put the merge blocks into the right group so that they're all named and you know which one it is. And you drag it in. I use a one, three and five to keep them nice and separate because you don't want to detach something uh, all of a sudden out in the middle of nowhere and toggle on and off. And this now means that if I press five, I will detach that block from the platform. And, oh, I managed to put the big red one in there. And I've completely messed up. Great. Well, this is rescuable, but this is a good example of why I needed to be careful. I am attached to the blue and not the red. See if I can recover this without needing to uh, go and do something else. Fortunately, I should just be able to fly over there and merge with it. Uh, gonna need to go that way. Gonna need to go up a bit. And then we're going to need to go back. No, oh, that's rubbishy aim. Let's try that again from this angle. There we go. Phew. Okay, I managed to save that. And I will reverse back down. We need to turn that back on again. Big red battery. So it, was, it detached the right one. I'm just an idiot and <laughs> picked the red battery instead of the blue battery. So what I should have done is gone in here and gone, okay, I'm now on the big red. So I will pick out the big red battery. Toggle on and off press 5 and there we go as intended off we fly with our battery now for some reason I don't know why whenever you detach it removes this connector from your toolbar so putting it back in there because we will need the one at the back in order to deal with some of the attachments and I went for the big battery intentionally because some of the attachments that I've built apparently need this big battery in order to function but the idea is once you've got yourself some power and we can turn off the reactors by hitting 9 so we're running purely on battery power now 
uh, and you know, seven hours, six hours, that's plenty of battery power if you think about it in reality, and we will go and pick ourselves a tool. So for the front, which is on number one, which again is a uh, named connector, there we go, tool connector blue, which is on our first position, on off, and we can go and pick ourselves a tool. Now at the moment I've built four different tools for the front, and I'm working on new designs and new things for these as we go, so this will probably not be my last video on the modular ship. But we pick ourselves a very tool, and we've got a welder. Um, the feet, landing feet thing, is basically just for positioning and moving other ships around, either while you're building on them, or if you want to take them over to the uh, destruction hangar over there and take them to pieces, then that's a good way of moving things around and just generally dealing with them. We have a, a grinder, and we have a weapons pod for the front. So uh, obviously, they work all work as you would expect them to. So I'm actually going to load up the weapons pod because the weapons pod has the most interesting other stuff to do with it. So we just line ourselves up with the weapons pod. And merge box being nice and forgiven, forgiving, just pull us in. Now, all those feet that they're on top of are set up to auto-grab things in range with a nice minimal force, so I can just now pull away. And there we go, we've taken the, the weapon block out. We are now equipped with weapons on the front, and if we so wished, we could pull out our, our weapons onto our second toolbar. I do love this multiple toolbar thing, it's really good. Uh, and we'd be equipped with weapons. But we're not done yet, we're not done yet. This modular ship's got more ideas than that. We've got some rear ends we can put on as well. We have a cargo rear end over there, which has a connector and a ejector and, and whatever they call the new ones. I can't remember, emitter, whatever, whatever it's called. It has one of each of those and the idea is it's just a big cargo block and it's useful for moving stuff from one place to another that's not already connected up via a conveyor system. So should you want to move to a new asteroid, start building a new platform, you could load that thing up really easily just by positioning it underneath an emitter and then you could unload it again the other end should you need to. So just a cargo attachment. I'm going to load up the second attachment, by far my favourite, uh, which is the fighter package essentially. You combine the front of this and the rear of this, you get your assault package. And just get in there and line myself up. I'm probably too high, too low. Perspective, god damn you. There we go. Good dunk, and now we're all connected, and again we can just fly away with this. And this one was designed as the fighter package, so it's given me more maneuverability. Another set of gyros in the back there as well, and a nice selection of weapons. And this will all fly around on battery power, not using any reactors whatsoever, and be fully functional. As you can see, the fuel time, even when maneuvering hard with this many engines, is still a practical volume. Yes, you're going to have to charge it back up again eventually. But the idea of this is this is a survival thing where you don't have to constantly be farming uranium because you're using it all the time. So there you go, that's the uh, the combat loadout for this. And as I go forward with the various sort of thoughts as far as this modular design works, I will be coming up with more attachments and potentially even, I'm thinking about putting a T connector in the middle so you can clamp things onto the side. Maybe even making a ship designed to have two pilots that modules together. I haven't completely thought them through yet, but that sort of idea. But either way, let's go and... Uh, and drop our rear back off again. So we need this, I mean, it's called Big Red Battery, but in reality, it's the rear connector. It's the rear one of these merge blocks, and the toolbar is set up to be, number one is your front, whatever's on the front. Number two is whatever's in the middle, which is normally used to detach the batteries, but doesn't have to be. And then number five is, is your rear end, whatever's on the back of the ship. So you just line up, I can demonstrate leaving these things on the deck. And the, it's almost easier to leave them behind than it is to... Uh, pick him up in the first place. Although perhaps not with this bit because it's quite big and I didn't really leave much space to dock it in there. But yeah, you would just drive in, come down until the feet go green. Mm, I'm gonna go. Looks like I'm really close, but I'm apparently not. And then you press five to detach the rear end and away you sail. Fighter package ditched. I'm going to put our rear connector back, turn it back on again. Uh, and eventually the idea will be to have a whole range of different tools you could attach to these and more batteries charging, maybe, maybe another battery charging station somewhere else. And you could kind of do whatever you wanted with them, but it's really limiting how many resources you have to spend to get it to all work. So you could you know, end up with quite a large ship powered purely off this stuff. The merge blocks work really well. The only thing that's confusing about them is making sure that everything's named so that you can identify which merge block you need to turn on and off, because as you saw with the battery thing earlier, what you don't want to do is accidentally disconnect something you're not attached to. 
So if I go into the control panel, my solution to this was this block locator, which if I turn on, you can see that it's got a very short range on it. And all it does is highlight the names of the important connectors when you turn them on. So you have them on active on HUD, and that will just tell you, you know, tool connector. This is how I went through and named everything to make sure that I could do the right ones is just by looking at them. And then a bit of common sense as far as the colors were concerned so that you had a uh, an easy way of telling what it was that you were actually attached to without having to go through and uh, you know manually go through is it merge block one two which one of these 34 merge blocks that i've got on this particular charging station is it that i'm trying to get rid of uh, and dropping off the front end tool obviously is much the same as dropping off the rear end except perhaps slightly easier because it's not massive so you just come in line yourself up lower it on it goes green and you press one and away you fly so yeah, that's basically the uh, the main concepts of the modular ship and sort of how I've gone about making it. This platform itself is also solar powered. I mean, a little inelegant, I admit, but as it's a small ship, which it needs to be in order to have the uh, the small feet rather than the enormous platform feet, uh, I, that's how I had to do it. it. It's not connected to power, and I really didn't want to have a bit of the system that was not solar powered in some way. And then the final bit we've got over here, which doesn't work on our platform because, as you can see, there's no gravity for a lot of it. And then in some places, we've got the gravity turned down to 0.2 so that if you accidentally turn your jetpack off, you don't kill yourself. Um, but as such, it means that ground vehicles like that, even with the big line of artificial mass blocks, they don't really work. So, But it's that sort of idea. You could do pretty much what you want with it. Uh, I will just go and hook up to the... Uh, the battery charging platform, detach my battery so that I can show you how all that goes about, and also show you the control panel on the uh, charging station because that's kind of the most complex of them and, and that the bit where you've got to be the most careful with what you're detaching and how you've named everything because there's quite a lot of merge blocks on there and if at any point, this doesn't have a cockpit on it so you can only control stuff on it when you're attached to it. So you've got to be careful not to accidentally turn off one of the um, merge blocks on the floor because if you turn those off, the only way to turn it back on again is to go and attach to a completely different place on the platform and go through and work out which one of the merge blocks it was you just turned off. And there, you know, there are a few little clunky bits left with it. But for the most part, I feel this is actually quite a functional, useful working system. So now I'm here, and if I want to... Uh, actually, let's do the control panel first. So here in the control panel, you can see um, in order to get these things to appear at the top up here, uh, I've just put them into groups on their own. It's a single item in the group, but it, make, it separates it out from this mass of merge blocks, so it makes it a bit easier to work out what you're doing. Um, thrusters is up there, because at one point I um, was turning the thrusters on the ship on and off to save power, but it wasn't a particularly viable theory, so you, know, you could actually get rid of that thrusters group that's not important. Uh, and as you can see on here, we've got all these batteries. These are set onto semi-auto, so uh, at the moment, is there any of them charging? No, just connecting up there. The way semi-auto works is they'll, it'll actually use the batteries that are fully charged to charge the batteries that aren't fully charged. So semi-auto kind of works, kind of doesn't, but it does mean that most of the time they are almost fully charged, just not completely charged, and they charge really, really quickly. And of course, all that power has come from solar in the first place. But what you can see in here is uh, merge blocks, many, many merge blocks. So. Yeah, it was important to make sure that that was all neatly separated, and that's where a lot of the thinking came into it. So last bit's last. Uh, this is one of the few times you will use number three, which is the middle merge block, the one just behind the cockpit, and that is to detach from the platform. And what I tend to do is I'll detach first and then turn my reactor on afterwards because the reactor will otherwise feed into the power system and start trying to charge the batteries on the platform. So press three to detach, and we have now detached, and then we press nine to turn on our reactors, and off we fly. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for this particular modular ship video. Um, as you can see over there, I did I did build two of them. It felt somehow appropriate to have more than one if they were going to be modular. Um, yes, you can if you really want connect the two together, either forwards or backwards. Um, and it does work and it flies reasonably well. I have no reason why you'd want to do that, but inevitably that was the first thing that my friends when they came on the server and saw this was like, I want to join them together and see what that looks like. So, so yes, you can do it. Either way, this will be up on the Steam Workshop, uh, so if anyone wants to come and give it a go and give the rest of our survival world a go, because there's a few other bits and bobs we've done here that have all been uh, 
very much geared towards survival and making sure survival is efficient and good for us, uh, then give it a download, have a look around, have a play, see if you come up with any other cool ideas with this modular ship thing. Uh, the only thing I've got left to build for this sort of iteration of it before I start advancing things and coming up with new prototypes is I want to build a little um, station platform thing that literally just has a merge block for these things to connect to so that they don't have the potential of floating away. I don't like leaving the reactors on because again that's not the point this is solar but if someone does knock into these they are going to disappear so a connector to connect those to the floor is the only thing missing from this setup at the moment i would say and uh yeah thanks a lot for watching guys leave me a like a comment if you found this helpful or interesting in any way and don't forget you can grab this off the steam workshop i've stuck the link down below this video thanks for watching and i will see you next time